Hello and welcome to this video on laminin. Laminin is one of the more common proteins and is one of the human body's most common protein-based structures. Where laminin is unique is its appearance. That is, laminin is famous or perhaps infamous for being a cross shape. I said, well, the series is on the glory of God in the human body. He said, that's really amazing. I'm a molecular biologist at the university down the road. G give me your talk. And I was like, oh, wow, I wasn't quite yet ready to unload the talk for a molecular biologist. So I kind of stumbled through what I had, and he's kind of being kind and gracious and like, uh-huh, that's good. And then he says, well, what's your big left hook? You got to have a left hook, a big finish, right? I said, I don't have a left hook yet. He said, oh, Louie. Oh, man, your left hook is laminin. Its fame is also a good opportunity to explain a lot about proteins and how they interact. The basis of laminins are amino acids. These are called residues when in a large protein. Each amino acid has a charge to it. This is an overall charge which is either positive or negative. There are some neutral amino acids, but these are not very important to our example of laminin. As there are charges on each residue, they will interact. This is true of anything with polarity. The electrical wires in your house create a charge and it can interfere with your wireless signal. The neurons in your own body have a moving charge along the axon, and some are insulated to reduce the interference that occurs. It's something true of just about all chemicals. All atoms have a charge. Since the 20 amino acids that make up the human body and laminin are made up of atoms, this is equally true. That universal truth makes understanding laminin that much easier. Laminin is important across the body as it forms a large part of the basement membrane. That is the area that helps cells adhere, supports tissue, enables cell signaling, differentiation, migration, and structure to name some of its functions. It is characterized by a cross-like shape. Like many things, structure and function are closely linked. This is made possible by having three different amino acid chains or protein chains. There is no way for the protein to effectively create that shape with just one. Knowing that these three chains contribute to the shape is important. It means we will need regions that can bind to one or more of the associated side chains. That they need to have a region that directs the two chains to form the arms. As there are three different chains, we can look at each one and then see how they interact to form the infamous cross shape. Laminins are otherwise known as heteromeric molecules. They have an alpha, beta, and gamma chain. These are written with the Greek letters you see here. There are, roughly speaking, three roughly identical short arms. They are 36 nanometers, plus or minus 6 nanometers. Given the variance in laminin across species and examples, exactly how many residues make up that length will vary somewhat, but for now we'll focus purely on a distance measurement rather than a count. The short arms, found on the top and sides, generally contain a number of central and terminal regions that are separated by rod-like regions. The longer arms contain additional globular regions. These are going to help in ensuring that structure occurs. All three chains contain different kinds of regions within them, and you can see them marked here. We are largely going to focus at this point on regions 1 to 6. Those six domains or regions are very important, as in the short arms of it, they are what primarily make up the directionality of it. The terminal ends, which are marked, are related to the region of the alpha chain. In addition to these common domains, you'll find that the beta chain contains a couple of extra amino acids, roughly 40 that make it just a little bit longer. These contain both glycine, cysteine, and likely to contain a number of folding and stabilizing regions. These are held together using disulfide bonds. What is important is that these regions are incompatible with helix formations, 
and that's presumed to be what ensures that the three arms break off and go in different directions at this stage. And this is further supported by looking at domains 3 and 5. These are rich in glycine and cysteine, and because of this, they will contain many turns and would need to be stabilised by disulfide bonds. Because of this, and the repeating sections of about 50 amino acids, you can figure out just how often and where the different parts of the laminin protein should come together, and where they should be kept apart from each other due to things like this. Having seen what contributes significantly to the shape and structure of laminin, that is the cross shape, we can now begin to see how the structure relates to function. The fact that it has multiple domains, and that each domain is made up of repeated sections of the same series of amino acids, means you can figure out what each one is related to as far as its functionality goes. For example, basement membrane components could have a big part to play in this, because they can bind to the membrane. Without this, the cells would not have anywhere to adhere to their site. This could then help in creating and maintaining complex structures necessary for things like organs. After all, you're working in three dimensions, not on a flat plane that's in two dimensions. When you add into this that you can create size and shape using laminin in this way, you can see how a cross shape is so very useful. You have an up, down, left and right. Because laminin is both found in the basement membrane and attaching to cells, and in this way it can begin to exert a variety of effects on these cells, whether that is signals related to differentiation or migration. Simply by interacting with the laminin and changing its attachment, you can then influence the cells that are directly attached to it in turn. Laminin itself has two cell attachment sites. One can be found on the short arm, marked P1 here, and the other on the long arm, marked E8. The E8 site is much higher affinity than that on the short arm or P1. The short arm site is not always active, but it can be made active. Some theories state that it's possible that during proteolysis or breakdown of protein and consequential tissue remodeling, such as say building up of scar tissue, the area can be activated that way and you can then begin to rebuild sites that have been damaged. In other cases, tumors may use it in particular. Laminin is a nice and simple examination of the ways in which three different protein chains, all of which are very closely related to each other, interact and form different kinds of bonds across themselves to form a very particular shape, how the different amino acid residues at different points, and when they are present in a repeating sequence, ensure the same activity occurs on a regular basis and contributes significantly to the structure how the structure of something like laminin, and other proteins for that matter, can then play a role in its function. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.